Uh, talks to end political crisis in Togo um, ended inconclusively yesterday after the Ecuador led uh, dialogue failed to exhaust issues dividing the Togolese government and the coalition of 14 opposition parties. Uh, what we know is that a communique issued after 15 hours of talks agreed for suspension of demonstration and release of persons who were arrested for their involvement in last year's demonstration. The Information Ministry is holding a news uh, conference on this matter. We can go live to them and when we come back we'll finish with the Amnesty International conversation. Please stay with us. In thousand cities to procure travel documents and travel visas for these young people to go to Dubai. These recruitment agencies solicit the assistance of travel and tour operators who act as sponsors of the visa applications for a fee. Meanwhile, the visas that they secure for these young people are tourist visas, which have only three months validity. On arrival in Dubai, a corresponding agent takes charge and requests for an additional 1,000 dirhams to cover accommodation for one month, while the job seeker is left alone to embark on a job search contrary to the promise of an assured job. Given that the validity of UAE tourist visas expires within three months, most Ghanaians are unable to secure work within the period and hence become illegal residents. Their illegal immigration status obliges them to pay for any extra day spent in excess of their visa term at $95 for the extra day and $30 per day for any additional day spent in the UAE when they want to leave. This is what has ensured that 500 become stranded. Meanwhile, the Consulate General in Dubai has been in regular contact with the stranded Ghanaians and is working on getting them the necessary support to return home. We wish to take the opportunity to remind Ghanaians that the ban on exportation of labor from Ghana to the Gulf is still in place. And I think I should emphasize that, that there is a ban on the exportation of labor from Ghana to the Gulf. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Interior, and the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection, are working to ensure that bilateral agreements are reached between Ghana and the states in the Gulf before the ban is lifted. Now, point number two force meeting on the ECOWAS single currency program. The President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodanko Ekufuado, will tomorrow, the 21st of February 2018, chair the fifth presidential tax force meeting for the ECOWAS single currency. In attendance will be presidents from Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, and Nigeria. As part of measures to ensure a common currency for the ECOWAS zone, ECOWAS adopted a roadmap in May 20, 2009 with key deadlines that were meant to ensure the operation of a common currency for the ECOWAS zone by 2020. Over the years, there has been challenges hindering compliance with the convergence criteria on a sustainable basis, a prerequisite for macroeconomic stability required for the establishment of the monetary union. As a result of the challenges faced in the introduction of the West Africa Monetary Zone common currency by the 2015 deadline, the extraordinary summit of ECOWAS held in Dakar on 25 October 2013 entrusted the Ghanaian and, Niger and Nigerian heads of state with the task of supervising the process aimed at introducing the signal currency by the scheduled deadline. The ECOWAS Presidential Tax Force was therefore set up in January 2014 through a decision of the ECOWAS Authority 
of heads of states with the task of supervising the process aimed at introducing the single currency by the scheduled deadline. The ECOWAS Presidential Task Force was therefore set up in January 2014. Through a decision of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of States and Governments, the task force was expanded to include the heads of state of Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire in 2016. The task force has had four meetings to date, the last of which was held in October 2017 in Niamey, Niger. In Niger, a major decision was taken for a few countries which are ready in 2020 to start the monetary union while other countries join later. The decisions of the Niger meeting are as follows. One, that member states to pursue structural reforms to stem the volatility of the prices of raw materials and enable their economies to be more resilient to external shocks. Two, member states to take measures, including the attainment of the convergence criteria necessary for the creation of the ECOWAS single currency by 2020. Three, member states to strengthen multilateral surveillance, including the use of international monetary institutions. Four, it also instructed the ministerial committee to meet within three months to propose a new roadmap to accelerate the creation of the single currency by 2020. In this framework, a gradual approach where a few countries which are ready can start the monetary union while others join later. And then finally, that the presidential tax force holds its next meeting in Accra in February 2018, which is why this meeting is happening as we speak, which is the presidential tax force meeting tomorrow. We'll chair. The last point, ladies and gentlemen, is the issue of nurses picketing at the Ministry of Health. It has come to the notice of government that since yesterday, picketing at the Ministry of Health, demanding that they be engaged to work in health facilities immediately. Government wishes to appeal to them to discontinue the picketing and go home, whilst the Minister for Health works to get them placement, as has been assured. It is important to state that when we came into office in 2017, there was a backlog of graduates from to 2015 to be absorbed. As we speak, nearly all those in that category have been absorbed. Since 2017, government has engaged more than 16,000 of those who graduated between 2012 and 2015. I need to emphasize that since 2017, government has engaged more than 16,000 of those who graduated between 2012 and 2015. It is also significant to state that the government of Ghana has since 2014 stopped the policy of bonding student nurses, which basically means that government is no longer under an obligation to engage them when they finish school. Even so, government has made provision in the 2018 budget for the recruitment of 32,000 health personnel, including 27,000 for various categories of nurses alone. Again, it's a point that I need to emphasize. I'm saying that in the 2018 budget, there is provision for the recruitment of 32,000 health personnel. In other words, all categories of health personnel. Out of that 32,000, there are 27,000 places for nurses alone in 2018. Meanwhile, there are nurses who graduated from private training institutions from 2012 to 2016, who as Ghanaians and children of Ghanaian taxpayers also deserve some consideration. And government is currently capturing their data in order to engage them as well. This being done, sorry, this is being done with the 2016 badge 
of graduates from government institutions who are currently the ones that are picketing at the Ministry of Health. We are therefore appealing to them, whilst also assuring them that we are working to get them engaged as soon as our validation processes are complete. Thank you very much for coming, and God bless us all. Um, as usual, let me, let me do the tree for the tree stations, and then we can take the question. Minister for Information there, um, Mustafa Hamid, speaking about uh, President Akufuado chairing an ECOWAS meeting on the single currency tomorrow. Uh, he didn't quite speak about the Togo issue. We thought that that was, what he, that was one of the issues he was going to address, but he didn't quite do that. He's also talking about the nurses, uh, the unemployed nurses. That story we did earlier at the beginning of the bulletin.